just a two-hour ferry ride away from Tallinn is Helsinki. The Finnish capital welcomes me with cloudy skies and chilly temperatures. The first impression, I'll be honest, is a bit underwhelming. The city appears gloomy. It almost feels like stepping into an old photo with faded colors. While crossing the Kampi district, I noticed that, with only a few exceptions, many of the buildings here are dark and bulky, which increases the sense of heaviness, especially when the sun isn't shining, which sadly happens a lot around here. In a city where architects have historically taken a lot of inspiration from the functionalist movement of the 1930s and 40s, it's perhaps not much of a surprise that a lot of the buildings were built with a no-frills and pragmatic attitude. As much as I can admire a funky building, as in functionalist, when I see one, I'm more into traditional, in-your-face beauty. That's why I'm immediately drawn to the elegant buildings lining Alexander Street, or Alexi, as locals call it, and their beautiful decorations. This street is the place for shoppers, and it's possibly one of the busiest in town. Another site I really enjoy around here is Helsinki's gigantic Art Nouveau Central train station, a spectacular building that is the busiest in Finland, with 200,000 passengers per day. My favorite detail in the station? The masked up lantern carriers at the entrance. I have to say though, it is when the sun comes out that Helsinki truly glows. This is also when Senna Square is most enjoyable. The majestic Lutheran Cathedral, Helsinki's most famous landmark, dominates this important meeting place. I have to come back to the square three times to see it in the sunshine, but as I do, I start to understand why Helsinki is named the Pearl of the Baltic Sea. Senate Square was conceived as the beating heart of the city by architect Karl Engel, who planned and built this neoclassical masterpiece in the first half of the 1800s. Here's where Helsinki's most beautiful and important buildings stand. The cathedral, of course, but also the government building and the main site of the Helsinki University. In Engel's vision, they were meant to represent political, religious, scientific and commercial power. During my visit, the Helsinki Biennial is also on, and Senate Square hosts the mesmerizing aerial sculpture 1.78, the work of Boston-based artist Janet Eckelman. No visit to Helsinki is complete without a stroll down the perfect gardens of Espa, the esplanade connecting the Swedish theatre with the waterfront. As I reach the water, I stop to admire the beloved fountain of Havis Amanda, with its four water-spouting sea lions. Helsinki's waterfront is particularly enjoyable, thanks to its souvenir and food stalls, the gorgeous view of the Uspensky Cathedral and the pretty market hall selling traditional Finnish products. I love myself a nice marina, so I decide to walk towards the cathedral and then make a left on the street running by Pojoi Satama Harbour. At 9.30 the following morning, determined to beat the crowds, I'm already on board of a ferry to the island district of Suomenlinna, perhaps my favorite thing in Helsinki. It is during the crossing that I'm reminded that the Helsinki archipelago is comprised of more than 300 islands. Known for its UNESCO-listed fortifications, Suomenlinna is a popular destination for locals and visitors who come here to learn about the history of the island, of Finland itself really, to have a picnic in its beautiful natural surroundings and to enjoy the gorgeous views of the Baltic Sea. Sweden, which ruled Finland for more than 600 years, was the main maritime power in the Baltic until the early 18th century, when Russia began to look like a threat. Its brand new capital, St. Petersburg, was located right on the Gulf of Finland, just 300 kilometers away. Maybe underestimating the risk, Sweden had been reluctant to invest in fortifications along the Finnish coastline. But its defeat in the Russian-Swedish War of 1741-1743 convinced them it was time to act. The construction of Sveborg, Swedish castle as the fortress of Swomenlinna was known back then, began in 1748. Progress was quick at first. 
and a fortress, extensive sea-facing fortifications and a navy dockyard were erected. But the project was never completed, and within a few years, Russian blockades and a chronic lack of supplies and facilities made things increasingly complicated for the Swedes. The 1808 Russian campaign and then siege of Sveborg marked the end of the Swedish rule in Finland. Your favorite thing to do will be following the coastal path from the western side of the island to the eastern. The walk takes you past bastion fortifications, reservoirs and artillery until you reach the stunning Royal Gate, the monumental entrance to the fortress. A few hours later, back in town, I visit another architectural wonder, Tempel Yaukyo, also known as Rock Church, was built directly into the rocky wall of a hill. The simple but beautiful church is flooded with light thanks to its huge round skylight and it's one of the most popular attractions in Helsinki. With some extra time available, I decide to set off on an electric scooter to explore some lesser known parts of the city. So from Market Square I head west. I'm convinced that by sticking to the seafront I'll be able to reach the city beach known as Yetaranta. Needless to say, minutes later I get horribly lost. The topography of the city is pretty unforgiving without Google Maps, which I have to stop and check time and time again. When traveling, this is often when you discover the best parts of your destination, the ones that you didn't expect, but I can't really say that that's what happens to me in Helsinki. Most of the areas I cross are sort of nondescript, including one on the map looked like a giant park, but really turned out to be a small garden sandwiched between a cemetery and a sports ground. What about the beach at Yetaranta, you might ask? Was it worth the painfully expensive scooter ride? Let's just say that I don't think I'm ready to trade my beloved Mediterranean beaches for it. Underwhelming areas aside, I have certainly enjoyed my stay in the Finnish capital. But the time has come to move on to my next stop. So, on the afternoon of my third day, I board a ferry for the overnight crossing to Stockholm, where I'm staying for just 24 hours to catch up with an old friend. Just as well, because the weather in the Swedish capital is terrible. Rainy and windy pretty much the whole day. Luckily, it's my second time here and I can afford to just walk around with no clear destination and enjoy a very wet Gamlastan, the city's beautiful old town. Holding on to my umbrella, I walk around the city aimlessly, discovering corners I hadn't seen before. But my anticipation is mounting now. It is just a few more hours until the part of my trip I'm most looking forward to. The Norwegian fjords. <laughs> 